Ah, uh, there's, well, music, there's no guitar solos anymore. And then for some reason, with all this technology, millennials, if you take a full water bottle and you flip it in the air and it lands upright, they run out of the room like they just saw a witch. <laughs> and I'm in the middle of watching the World Series and out of nowhere they have this moment, stand up to cancer. I'm watching a ball game and all of a sudden everybody stands up. No, there's a time and a place. Look, I know somebody. <laughs> somebody that has died of cancer. I would never go to the movies with you and in the middle of it hit pause and be like, oh, by the way, Conan, I know this guy. What your take is on Joe Biden? His hands on someone's woman's, woman's hip, right? And then you take the picture and you just start writing a bunch of creepy shit about what he's doing. It's not like he went for side boob. He wasn't like, like sliding up. No, it's a total overreaction. Is that the face someone makes when they're going for side boob? I would think so, you know? Here he's go, Conan's going for it! I would say 13% of people on the internet are cool. The rest of them, they're, ju they're just a bunch of animals. Why would, you wanna, why would you wanna talk to them? Wait, you're saying only 13% of people are, are... Are cool. 13% are cool. The other 87% are writing horrific stuff under YouTube videos. They're, they're, they're assholes. Yeah. <laughs> it's here. worse than that for people. Everyone's got an iPhone, you know? Hey, look. No, I can't say that. I was going to say he's gone. They still came out with another one, right? <laughs> That's true, right? Oh, look, when David Lee Roth left Van Halen, could Eddie not play guitar anymore? You know what I'm saying? Right. That's a good analogy. <laughs> Women are so overrated, right? We, we went from... Wait, not, wait, what? We wait, went... Wait, uh, what? We what? went... Wait, we went, what? We went from not listening to them to now it's just, it's just, it, you know... It's just, it's, it's ridiculous. Like that believe women. It's like all of them. <laughs> going around saying that 87% of the world sucks. You're not going to get one. No, but this is the thing. You're not going to get one. I can say that because there's nothing you can take away from me. <laughs> what are you, you going to do? You're going to say I can't do stand up in strip malls anymore? That's, that's usually, that's usually the punishment. So the genius. And I was making fun of the military, you know, which you can't do now. Like, we totally went the, from Vietnam, all the hippies being like, hey, man, you're like a baby killer, man, to like, now you got to give like a standing ovation when they walk over to Delta, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know, show, show that you're not in ISIS. Like, I don't know what you have to be doing. Like, ah, ah, thank you. Thank there was a, a lot coming from the Hillary Clinton camp that Trump is bad for children. And they had a lot of ads that said, you know, children are watching this guy. Oh, we all uh, know talk. that children five and six years old are always tuning into the debates. <laughs> Taking notes. That's what I did when I was a kid. I'll never forget that. <laughs> you never saw weird science, how creepy these nerds are? All these cameras on your phone, all of that. Do people go on Ancestry.com? Why would you send your saliva into the Internet? Why would you do that? <laughs> Why don't you just go to the Illuminati and help them build your robot replacement? <laughs> it's the millennials. The you're, millennials. You're, you're a bunch of rats. All you're doing is trying to get people in trouble. That's all you're doing, taking pictures and recording people. He said this, but did you really mean that? <laughs> well, what did you say about the military that got people so mad? Or this one guy so I mad? I was just saying, like, yeah, the guy who flies the fighter jet, okay, and has missiles shot at him, that guy's a hero. However, if you're the guy that, like, points in the direction that the plane takes off in... So, so does your wife watch any of these games with you? Does she? No, she has the female complex, multitasking <laughs> brain. That's why they can't be happy. They, they just, they just always. They're like, what is that lizard that can look at two things at once? That's what they're like. So you got to figure out a way to like thin out the herd, and it's too late. It's no. These are the hard decisions that are going to have to be made. We are. We're here to hear about some yeah. hard choices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know how I would do it. What? I would, I would randomly sink cruise ships. <laughs> now they're going after like a hundred year old guys. My question is, when are they going to go after the whores, right? What? Why are you looking at me like you don't know what whores are? Divorce. Oh, divorce. I thought you said the horse. No, I said, oh, I said whores. Uh, you're both wrong. I said whores. Oh, whores. Whores. Wait Hold a minute. Andy and I, well, this has never happened before where you and I both misunderstand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what killed me when Bruce became Caitlyn. That was like a national news story, like yeah. on a, at a ridiculous level. He should have given us a chance to say goodbye. I love, you know, I watched him. 
on the Olympics. Uh-huh. I watched him on chips. I watched him on that horrible show my wife watched where he just walks around in the background. <laughs> hey, just like, that's what I've learned. Oh, God. You know what makes women happy? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing makes them happy. And that is why they have slowly taken over the NFL, because it annoys them that, that we can just sit there with, like, a pizza and a drink. Like, eh, that's not holding. And just, just be like, and enjoy ourselves. And then also, you, you, can't, you can't tell other people's kids not to do stuff. Right. So you got to kind of like be loudly like, hey, he's climbing up on the utility pole and kind of hope that somebody does something. Well, back in the day, you could yell at people's kids. And I think that that needs to come back. And that's what's holding back this country. Yeah. 20 years, you work your way up to the front and now still they won't let you. Uh... Yeah, now that fat guy's considered disabled because he can't stop eating cookies. <laughs> so he gets on. Look at me groaning. 90 percent of the world is starving to death. <laughs> that guy. He is salad and get on the treadmill like the rest of us. <laughs> We're all working out. What is the problem? The only thing I didn't like was that, that, that shot where he was playing hoop. Yeah, so it, was, it, was, uh, it went viral, I think. He was yeah. playing basketball and he took a shot and yeah, he went was, in. He was playing with his black friend that he's paying to lose. Dude, I'll tell you right now, go do a show. Third show Saturday night. In a comedy club. I'm telling you, you get, a, you get an unhappily married woman in an undersex marriage after a couple of drinks. A co- I'm telling you, cover your junk because she's coming full court press. You're having a full on breakdown. I am not. You're just not just, listening. I am listening to every word. Didn't she for the first five years have like midgets who wanted to bang their mailman's boyfriend? And she, and she didn't want to do it. She didn't want to do it, but she didn't have the power to say no. So she wrote it out. And then when she could make a good decision, she did a show. But she stood on the heads of those little people for five years until she got... And then she's sitting there across from this guy like, like, so how could you... You know exactly what he's doing. It's the stupidest thing I've ever seen. Are you getting into the holiday spirit? We're getting close. Christmas coming up. Get excited? Yes, Come on. Yes, I am. I am. I, I actually like the holidays. And uh, Thanksgiving is my favorite because you just get to eat and that type of thing. But uh, I don't know. I don't like that Black Friday type of stuff. It just freaks me out. Makes me sad for Americans watching them getting trampled. You know? Yeah. You don't like Why, why would you do that? Why would you do that to yourself? Why wouldn't you just admit that you can't afford it at regular prices? <laughs> <laughs> Come back the next day. Come back the next day like a gentleman. <laughs> just walk in there, pick out what you want, and if your kids get less, they get less. That gives them drive. You know, rich kids, rich kids just sit around, you know, doing blow, sitting in Ferraris. They don't do anything. It's the poor kids that yeah, they they make stuff happen. So yeah, yeah, you don't get trampled grabbing your wig. You know, <laughs> the suspenders flying off. It's so sad to do what. Get an above ground pool for thirty dollars off. <laughs> there is nothing. There is nothing in Walmart worth getting trampled over. There's nothing. It's, it's processed. It's processed meat. Processed. processed meat. Clothes. All of it. You're gonna get trampled. Like make it like a high end store. Like you're going to. I don't even. I don't even know what. There's nothing worth. Getting trampled, it just makes me depressed yeah. that you would do that. People sit out for like weeks. There's a week. They, there... they don't even go to Thanksgiving. Yeah. Like they're on their cell phone and their mom's crying. I just, I just think you'd want to spend it with us. And you're sitting out there in that parking lot, feeling those people breathing down the back of your neck, just going like knowing who you're going to elbow. It's just the saddest. There are women that wait, that wait, uh, waited 22 days at Best Buy. They waited 22 days. And what did they get? What do, what do you think they got? I do don't you, know. You I... think they got trampled. Yeah. <laughs> the thing is, if you're going to go there, you don't want to be at the front of the line. You want to be about 40 deep. And I figure you pop out of the line and you wait till that first wave or two falls down. And then you go over the top like Walter Payton back in the day. <laughs> roll out of it. But even then... Even then, you got to know where to go in the store. Like, where is the thing that is on sale, right? Where are those mint Milano cookies or whatever they have that you're going to make a beeline for? 
on that linoleum floor. You're going to blow out a deep. Like, it's the saddest thing. It's one year what people should do. You know, like Richard Branson, one of these hot air balloon rich guys, should, <laughs> you should just like float in over him right before it and just start dropping everything that they want. But even then, they would start stampeding. Like, no matter how many hot air balloons he had. No, it's would, a bad idea. You don't want would, would, billionaires in hot air balloons <laughs> dropping toasters on people. That's just, just oh, a stupid yeah, idea, you have, you have like a little parachute. <laughs> All right, gift certificates. white guy when you having a good time yeah <laughs> give it to me man all right we're gonna keep this thing rolling right here y'all now you may have seen this cat on dave Chappelle's show hbo's one night stand premium blend he's one of the funniest caucasians i know y'all show some love for mr bill burr let him hear it y'all <laughs> Hi, man. What's up? How you doing? Was this too quick a transition? You know what I mean? Like nine, ten black dudes in a row and then like the whitest man on the planet. I'll let your eyes adjust. I was watching uh, George Bush today, man. I don't be a dick or anything, but could that guy like rehearse before he gives a speech? You know what I mean? Just say, just say it like, like a couple of times. How awful was he during that hurricane? He's just walking out, man. He's just like winging it. Walking out on the White House lawn. There's like sun in his eyes. He's just out there like, ah. Uh, ah, uh, there was a hurricane. Ah, uh, people are wet. Ah, uh, people don't like being wet unless they're swimming uh, uh, in, a, in a pool. He sounded like a little kid giving a book report who like didn't read the book just up there making up shit like uh there was a dog and uh he bit somebody and, and they didn't like it <laughs> every night i gotta watch that idiot on the news or they're doing stories about how fat kids are getting you see that every night every night they're talking about kids are obese now not fat kids not chubby they're obese like bedridden like, like, just laying there, like, I, ha I had my first heart attack when I was four. I, I was riding on my big wheel. I couldn't feel my left side. I began to, I began to pass out my head. I... <laughs> Yo, I don't want to be a dick, but how do you get that fat that quick? I can see you're 30, 40 years old. You went to McDonald's for 20 years. You got a little gut going. But you're five years old. There's no excuse for that shit. I'm telling you, man, that's the parents' fault. You know, stop feeding him. He doesn't have any money. He doesn't. Seriously. He can't go get a job so he can go buy more food. He's got to eat whatever you give him. Just put a plate of seaweed right in front of him. Go ahead, eat it. I don't want to eat it. Good, go to bed. Post your options. I own you until you're 18. Do some jumping jacks. No, but his parents are ridiculous. They act like they have no control. They're like, well, I don't know what to do. I mean, I try to make him eat a salad, but he didn't want to eat it. He was like, no, I want a cupcake. I said, you can't have it. But then he sat on my chest, and I, I couldn't breathe, and I just, I just wanted to get up after a while. People, you need tough love at that moment. If your kid is obese and he's still asking for cake, you gotta be like, no, you little shit. You're eating carrots and celery until I can pick you up again. This is ridiculous. You got a goddamn hernia on your birthday. I know, look, I know that seems harsh to be making fun of obese kids. I'll tell you why I'm doing it. They don't really exist. At least to the level that they're saying, they're saying it's an epidemic. You know, which means when I leave the theater tonight, I should have, like, difficulty getting to my car because of all these fat fucking kids out there like, Jesus Christ, they're everywhere. They're like locusts. See if you can crawl over the top of them. 
There's like 15 of them. It's nice to be back here down the south, man. I had a real weird experience last time I came down here. I was in Nashville, right? Sort of an awkward social situation, right? I'm sitting at this bar. There's this white dude sitting like two stools away. I don't know him. He doesn't know me. And that Terrell Owens story was in like sports news. So I try to make conversation. I'm like, man, look at this guy. This guy just signed a $40 million contract. He's already bitching, man. How much money do you need to make? And the dude looks at me. He's like, you know what I say? And then he looked over his shoulder, which I now know is the telltale sign that the N-word is coming, and it's coming hard. Oh yeah, it's not going to be pronounced with the A, it's going to be with the R, and he hit the R, he like stuck the landing, it was like a dismount, clan members high-fiving in the background, like doing the wave. Just out of nowhere, so now immediately I'm looking over my shoulder like, dude, what the hell are you doing? You know what I mean? I'm waiting for like this hail of black fists to come raining down on top of me. I hate when people do stuff like that. That dude made me part of like a potential ass kicking that I had nothing to do with. You don't do shit like that. He just had that word hot potato just threw it in my lap. Like, oh. Trying to pass it down to the next white dude. I hate when people do that, man. You know, it's like, dude, feel me out first. <laughs> Ask some questions. Do you like to fish? <laughs> Have you ever fucked your sister, right? <laughs> I start rattling off answers, then you go old school. <laughs> you give me a pamphlet, you tell me about your militia. <laughs> Don't just dive into it. That dude was one of the angriest people I ever met. I should have known that word was coming because he was just watching Terrell, right? Anytime I would bring up, look at man, that guy's talking trash, he would just like flip out. He won't shut up! <laughs> you know those people get like so mad they're not even looking at you? Their eyes are up, you just shut up and play the game! <laughs> you know what's funny? I don't even like Terrell, but now I love the guy. Because every time I see him talking trash, I know this idiot in Nashville He's just losing his mind, like kicking over his kitchen TV. Shut the fuck up! <laughs> I like violence, man. I am. I, not, not like when it happens to me or if I see it live. I like watching it on TV, you know? Watching people, you know, get attacked by animals. <laughs> just get blasted in the face or something, you know? Like, I'm a huge sports fan. You know my favorite, like, moment of, the, like, the last year was in sports? That Detroit Piston, Indiana Pacer, bench clearing brawl. Wasn't that great? That was one of the greatest things I've ever seen. I was so confused when I watched ESPN that day. They were like, that was absolutely disgraceful. Basketball fans, yeah, it just must be. A mess. I'm sitting there looking like, I'm a basketball fan. I loved it. I thoroughly enjoyed watching out-of-shape civilians get the shit kicked out of them <laughs> by professional athletes. It was fascinating. And I think as sports fans, we kind of had it coming, right? Because how many times you go into a game, right? You got a little too drunk, you started screaming at some dude on the field who could clearly kick the shit out of you, right? If you saw him in the parking lot, you'd be like, hey, can you sign my stamp collection? I think you're awesome. You get in the game, you're all drunk, you're like, you suck, buddy! You're a piece of shit! And they're always calling him up, come on up here! No, come on up here! Well, they came up there. They did, and they kicked the shit out of everybody. It was great. It was like a cartoon. You're like beating up whole rows of people at once, like... <laughs> I loved every second. I love how Ron Artest punched the wrong guy. Wasn't that great? He taught that dude a valuable lesson in life. When shit goes down, you don't just stand there like you're watching a movie, like, wow, it's coming right at me. Must be in 3D or something. That was a five foot six inch, 110 pound white dude had an angry six foot 10 inch black dude running right at him. That had to have been in his top three nightmares all time. Right behind getting his dick cut off and being lit on fire. And he just stood there. He's like trying to explain himself. Well, I still have the liquid in my cup, so there's, there's no way I could have. It's an idiot. Listen, I'm out of time. You guys were awesome. Thank you very much. Yeah, 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 man. All right, y'all, I got to bring my next dude out here. This is my homeboy from the STL. 
Uh, he's been rocking it for a long time all around the city. He did. And then also, you, you can't you can't tell other people's kids not to do stuff. Right. So you got to kind of like be loudly like, hey, he's climbing up on the utility pole and kind of <laughs> hope that somebody does something. Well, back in the day, you could yell at people's kids. And I think that that needs to come back. And that's what's holding back this country. Yeah. yeah. Long story short, Hugh Jackman plays the part of uh, Gary Hart. And he was he was amazing. And I had a f really fun scene where we were tailing him. We were chasing him down this alley. And he's like the nicest guy ever. But he's a big guy. He's like 6'4". He's ripped. And we went down the alley, and, he, and his character's mad at our character, and he just turned around and looked at us. And for half a second, I was like, oh, that's Wolverine. <laughs> and I, I literally, I legit got scared. And he's a big guy, you know? So what's funny in this scene is, is the, as a reporter, I have like a notebook, and I dropped it. And after the screening, we went to the Toronto Film Festival and all these actors are coming up to me. I love the choice you made. I love the choice you made to drop the notebook. I go, no, dude, that was real. I was like. <laughs> a Rolex? Yes, it is. I finally bought one 25 years in this business. Is it white gold or stainless? I don't know what it is. Is it heavy? No. Then it's stainless. No, is that what it is? I well, just... thank you. Thank you for taking my watch down a notch. <laughs> I finally felt successful. You see this? <laughs> you wouldn't say that if I had brown or black hair. I guarantee you. <laughs> Blonde hair, you'd be over here giving me your watch. <laughs> I love the racist white guy thing. A bunch of racist white guys. And they came out of the forest and they were just going, Trump, Trump, Trump. It's like, where were all these racist white guys the last two elections when they could have voted against the black guy? They were fine. Oh, I don't mind the black guy, but this white lady, we got to stop her. It's going to take her four wheelers. So your Christian background is is part of the, the show. Yes, and I episodes. wanted to talk to you about Jesus after this. Well, I, <laughs> not, the only reason why I bring it up is some people are the whitest person I've ever seen around. Yes. <laughs> Served me well. I've never worked for anything. <laughs> yeah, I was born on a yacht. It's just all been downhill. I don't even mean it in I don't mean it in in a, uh, a genetic way. I mean like I do. You <laughs> I'm talking full on white privilege. <laughs> It I was seems... stunned when I first heard about white privilege. I had no no idea what it was. It's like hey, everybody doesn't get to do this. <laughs> it seems as if the sun Pulling has up never to job touched interviews you. right as I get out of the car. You're hired. <laughs> Go home. We'll see you tomorrow. But... You never saw weird science. How creepy these nerds are. All these cameras on your phone. All of that. The people go on Ancestry.com. Why would you send your saliva into the internet? Why would you do that? <laughs> Why don't you just go to the Illuminati and help them build your robot replacement? <laughs> Being a mother is the hardest job out Most there. difficult job Most on the planet. Oprah said that. Oprah said that, yeah. Has, yeah. That, has your opinion on that, on that phrase changed at all since, since no. you've had a kid? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's not the most difficult job on the planet. It just isn't. <laughs> Dude, I did roofing in July. I almost, as a redhead, I almost died. There's people, there's people that work on like oil. What was that movie that guy made? The oil, the, the fucking, you know, they drill oil. What is it? There will be blood. With Not the... there will be blood. The, uh, out in the ocean, they would drill. I can never remember the names. Deepwater. Mark Wahlberg yeah, was Deepwater it. Horizon, yeah. yeah, yeah. Those guys were working on, on an oil rig. The fucking thing blows up. <laughs> They're on fire. They gotta jump into water that's on fire. <laughs> Salty water into their wounds. You gotta swim out of that oil and fire and then tread water. Praying to God that the Coast Guard is gonna get there before the sharks do. <laughs> now talk to me about a toddler. Oh, he was so fussy today. I just, he wouldn't eat his peas. Yeah, and just the level of reward that is, you know, as annoying as a kid is, like, they smile at you and it's over. It's over. So, I mean, you, you don't get that, you know, working on an oil rig when your buddy's greasy face lights up. <laughs> yeah, you know what? It really is all worth it. At some point, I was going to make a point here. That's why I keep looking at here and I just realize I'm blocking myself out of the camera. I love that you have the jib camera for this, like it's an action movie. Let's 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 swoop in at these two guys sitting in these unbelievably small chairs. I literally feel like I'm gonna fall onto the floor. This is insane. You really went all out with the audience, though. They got full size adult chairs. <laughs> Are these like from the 20s before they had like horse tranquilizers in our food, when everybody was like five foot one? 
Yeah. What did you say about the military that got people so mad? Or this one guy so mad? I was mad? just saying, like, yeah, the guy who flies the fighter jet, okay, and has missile shot him, that guy's a hero. However, if you're the guy that, like, points in the direction that the plane takes off in... <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, I shouldn't have to wear a mask. I don't want to wear a mask. I don't buy it. And then there are people that... Um... I love those people. What? Yeah, you like don't... the people that flip out? Yeah, don't wear it. Yeah. Don't wear it. Go kill yourself. It's awesome. Because I have to be honest with you, I know a lot of people died from COVID, but I'm starting to see the traffic come back, and uh, I selfishly thought I wish it killed a few more. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Netflix, yes, I am. second season, the deepest couch in sports entertainment. A lot of people think that uh, they're uncomfortable with my uh, my um, elevation. Are you uncomfortable with it? No, I just see all of your insecurities. <laughs> <laughs> your giant go, desk. <laughs> There you are. Look at Billy. How are you? You look like a fucking prize. I get my stupid headphones to work here. Something that'll work. Let me see if these ones will work. Hold they, on a second. No, they work good. My headphones aren't working for me, though. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's about me, Nick. It's not about <laughs> you here. Here we go. Dude is knocking it out of the park. He's one of my favorites. Here is Bill Burr. Ah, ha, ha. Look Jimmy. At, look at you. How are you? Oh, it's I good. I love that you did the audience applaud. Applause for everybody. Yeah, there he is. Come on. Keep it going for him. You just had the baby, right? Yeah, little uh, Friday morning. Friday morning. I did. I did. My wife did. I right, didn't yeah. uh, I didn't do anything. I felt unbelievably useless. <laughs> I was in total panic mode. When I dropped her off at the emergency room, she goes, All right, you gotta go park the car down in the in the in the spot. And I swear to God, I was in such fight or flight. I was I was driving down there, this voice in my head just said, just keep going. Just keep going. Just drive away. Which of course I wouldn't, but I started laughing. That's Isn't not... that like a Bruce Springsteen song about that? Going yeah. out to get cigarettes and you just, there's something hilarious about people abandoning their family. We're like, I just can't imagine like the hell that you would be in to do that move. But just knowing you were going to do it, like the level of excitement that you would have before, like, okay, I'm going to, uh, I'm gonna go get some cigarettes. <laughs> I'm never gonna see you people again. Your mother-in-law. All of this stuff is over. Fly a lot, and there's this whole new thing of generation of people that take their socks and their shoes off on the plane. You got to look at their smelly feet, and then they'll literally stand up and they will walk into a commercial airline bathroom. Yeah, use it, and then walk and sit back down again. That's not right. Yeah, if I was a dictator, those people would be eliminated. <laughs> A lot coming from the Hillary Clinton camp that Trump is bad for children. And they had a lot of ads that said, you know, children are watching this guy. Oh, we uh, all know talk. that children five and six years old are always tuning into the debates. <laughs> Taking notes. That's what I did when I was a kid. I'll never forget that. So, uh, this well, is very like, we're very like, you know, you wouldn't know that we like each other. Let's, let's try to tone it down. Here. No, no, I'm not. I'm just. <laughs> No, <laughs> I, what happened? I you came right at me just saying my theory stunk. I'm just here to promote a cartoon. I'm a dancing <laughs> monkey today. I'm trying to be a good guy. I want people to like me and watch the show here. And you're coming at me. I don't know anything about hoop. I'm a five foot ten inch white guy. This, uh, what is this? Rock 100.5. Mm -hmm. This is the worst interview I've ever done. And he's wearing Stetson cologne or something. It's just really over overpowering How you, doing? you know what he looks like he looks like the first guy who gets his ass kicked in a steven seagal movie <laughs> no. the background guy behind the uh the, the big kingpin why don't you handle this <laughs> like there's a danger to buying that car that big yellow they see that big yellow prancing pony and they just come out they come up out of the manhole covers all these gold diggers <laughs> Like, like a zombie movie. <laughs> and that is a gold digger magnet. And they are so good at it, they can look and tell if it's rented or not. They know where to look for the sticker. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> oh, there we go. No, but now this is like the ego one. Now I'm going to be sitting above you. Yeah, you no, got to come man. with two. It's fine. It's fine. Sir, the one, the one comedy through line that's working here is me shitting on this chair. Why would you take that from me? This is, you're just totally going against the grain. I understand it, but you got on camera, so I think you get paid, even though this is online. <laughs> I gotta tell you how I discovered you. I, you know, I, I do all my whole career to you. <laughs> yeah. I was, no, 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 I no. was struggling until no, no, no. Bobby <laughs> Lee no, discovered no, me. Oh, no, no, not, not discover you in terms of like, you d did it on your own, obviously, but no, in terms of I, my awareness of you. Oh. Can I tell you that story? Oh, no, no? I remember it was a big day in my career. Bobby Lee is finally aware of me. 
<laughs> Am I on Bobby Lee's radar? See, this is what he's gonna. This do. is when things start to happen. <laughs> this, I'm not gonna allow this to happen. Reversal. I'm not, yeah, I'm not gonna allow this to happen. Reversal. Yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna plug away. You know what I mean? Listen, you can talk to him all you want. <laughs> I can hear it. <laughs> Bill, how are you? What's going on? Oh, thank you. Thank you, all That's seven nice. of you. And the four Kevin Hart's. Yeah. <laughs> Is he in the black section of the crowd? That's yes. what it seems like. They, they've moved up to the middle. Progress. <laughs> I like it. I've always kind of been slightly dubious of a comedy competition, though. So you, don't, you don't have any confidence. No. What? You what? can't get up there and just do your dick jokes better <laughs> no, than other people? No, no. I, can't, I, feel, I feel like it's not the right way to go about it. All you have to do is be louder than someone else. Oh, I can do and that. And flap your hands around. <laughs> You're guaranteed to make the final. I built a whole career on that. Every time I go into a store and I see something, they go, can we get a phone number? Watching somebody give them the phone number, why would you do that? Yeah. I always give the same. I, mine is all area codes. They go, what's your phone number? I'm like, 323-818-2125. <laughs> We've never taken a break in the middle of a, of a gas station. I know. I had all this momentum going. I got to start all over again. <laughs> go ahead. Go to the card. <laughs> See this? We won game one. Here comes the second of the double header. <laughs> Conspiracy theory has gotten a bad name where now it's 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 become synonymous with like moronic thought. Like if you're into conspiracy theory, if you think like the bankers need to be stopped, then you also think the moon is made out of cheese. <laughs> and you think that there's shape shift shifters and like lizard people. You know, they just try to knock it down. It's like this country started with a conspiracy. That's how it came. We won, <laughs> so they're considered heroes and rebels, you yeah. know, uh, whatever, you re saying? revolutionaries, but yeah. if they lost, they would be hanged for, conspi for yeah. conspiring. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's not like it spontaneously happened. Yeah. Like all of a sudden, everybody just picked up a gun and started shooting at the British. You know, they sat around. <laughs> they, said they planned they it out. They planned it out. Yeah. I'm kind of getting tired of these people. What are <laughs> it's funny, when you said we won, I'm like, did we really win? But I understand what you're saying. I understand what you're saying. Now, oh, is that that African-American thing? Yeah. <laughs> whatever incognito you're an enigma what because i make a pie no you know what it is you're not a good listener you know, you've known me for 10 years you have no idea who i am it's all about comedy with you and moving up the ladder and pushing people <laughs> How's this? Are you getting out of an existing house? In a, a, no, I'm in going a from a one-bedroom apartment, and I figured I'd finally go out and buy a damn house yeah. and yeah. not have to deal with, you know, some jerk living above me or below me, All right. you know? Yeah. Do my own little thing. Get sure. my little 12-gauge, get a bunch of cans of tuna, get ready for the apocalypse. That's what I want to do. But is that, were you, were this you, was, were you this funnier, was, or was it just you enjoy the difficulty more? I mean, I, I don't know if it makes you funnier because it's a harder show to do, or it's more... I don't either. Yeah. I don't either, but I will say that what I liked about it was was that, uh, that you know, just that those years where you just like, you, you know, so much of your stand-up career is just one impossible situation <laughs> after another, and you're just standing there trying to do the math, like, how the fuck yeah. am I going to get these people? We don't have a microphone. Is yeah. that going to be a problem? Can you do 10 minutes while the band changes? You're, yeah. No, I can't. Uh, they're just going to take the instruments off and on the stage. <laughs> no, that's not Oh, yeah, and as you're doing it, they're coming in there tuning up. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> done gigs in hallways yeah hallways areas that met in a hallway cafeterias during at like one in the afternoon sure the college kids have no idea there's going to be a show and they just go we have a comedian his name's bill burry here yeah. he is and then you just walk up there and have to do an hour sure an hour i know of humiliation i would always say to myself i'd always say in an hour and one minute this is going to be over <laughs> and i'm going to be in my car driving away and that's what i would do and, it, and, and 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 the part that i hated was the waiting to go on yeah i still it, do I once still you go still on like it. yeah it's the, the hourglass has been turned over yeah the sand's starting to fall and every second you're up there whatever hit you take that's one less one you got to take yeah and no just, it's true i used it's to always true. call it my call College agent afterwards flipping out, going, I'm fucking done with these things. I'm never fucking doing this again. I don't give a shit. And he'd be like, All right, all right, all right. And then he, he knew I needed the money. And then he'd call me up. And he'd, be like, he'd be like, Billy, uh, Scott Bass. That was my agent. Scott Bass calling. I know you said you're not going to do this, but I, I, I do have a nooner. I'm going to build around it. And, you know, by then I'd be at home. And I cooled off. It was a couple weeks later from being on the road. And I, the rent was coming. I needed the money. And he would be, be like, all right, it's going to pay 700 bucks. It's like the middle of Iowa for 700 bucks, all inclusive. Actually, I got a couple of uh, friends of uh, African persuasion. 
And uh, I gotta get rid of him, man. I gotta admit to you. I'm fine. I'm spending too much money on clothes hanging out with them. Because I gotta like fucking try to keep up with their wardrobe. It's like every time they go out, they got all brand new shit on. All brand new shit. So when I show up with my white version of brand new, which is, you know, I basically, I ironed the shit, right? I ironed it, right? It's new. They just start trashing me. I can't keep up with them, man. They got like fucking 58 pairs of sneakers. You ever notice that shit? Like every color fucking Timberland. And I don't give a shit what fucked up color their shirt is. They got a pair of shoes to match it and a hat. It's like a rule or something. They're the worst. Even when you wear some new shit, there's like some sort of rule that you gotta like space out the amount of time with, within which like that you wear it. Cause God forbid you wear the same shirt within a 10 day period, one of them's gonna notice. All of a sudden just look at you funny like, this motherfucker's got the same shit he had on last Tuesday. And then the whole car's like, oh shit. Then everybody just starts making fun of your fucking clothes. First they do the math, like, what was that, five days ago? Five days, this motherfucker got five shirts. He got five shirts. And they start breaking it down. Yo, his first shirt be saying Monday. Next shit be saying Tuesday. Yo, on the weekend, he ain't be wearing no shirts. I'll tell you, that's actually funny. You know what? That's actually how, uh, how I judge black guys now. When I first came to the city, like, all black people scared me. No, I was like the typical white dude from like the suburbs, you know what I mean? Had no frame of reference, you know? So my only frame of reference with black people was like, those, remember those early 90s gangster rap videos? <laughs> Throw the fucking LA riots in there, man. It was fucking horrible PR. <laughs> I'm watching the videos, look, he's got a nice car, he's got all the women, and he's still fucking mad. <laughs> These black dudes are never happy. <laughs> but after 10 years of living in the city, this is how I narrow it down. Whether black dude scares me or not. Black dudes with dirty sneakers scare the fucking shit out of me. No. I figured out in my head, because I know from hanging out with them, that's the last shit that they're going to let go. The immediate shit that they have on. So I think, you know, if his sneakers are fucked up, that means his life is fucked up. Every time he leaves his building, the whole neighborhood, oh, shit! Everyone starts making fun of him. He's on the train in a bad mood. I kind of have this howdy doody, kind of mug me kind of face. Now, I'm not saying something's gonna happen. I'm just saying, I'm paying attention. So I've been seeing this girl recently. Uh, this black girl, right? She lives up in Harlem, you know? Gone out like three, four times, you know? First time we hung out, we hung out in like the village area in New York, you know, which is sort of like a racially mixed area. So shit was cool, you know what I mean? Second time we hung out was more like Midtown, you know? Then the third time, she called me at like 3.30 in the morning and she wanted me to come up to her apartment, right? So it's 3.30 in the morning, she lives in Harlem, I look how I look, so it's a fucking situation. <laughs> yeah, cause you know the deal, right? Basically a white dude feels comfortable up to about like 98th, 99th street, you know what I'm saying? The second the streets start getting to like triple digits, like 100, 101st street, start getting like a little asthma, I'm like, ah, oh, fuck, it's starting to get a little high up here. You feel that little tightness in your chest? Can you feel that? 106th Street, you're like leaning on shit. Like, dude, where'd all the cabs go? How come there's no taxis up here? Dude, what's a bodega? I don't know what that is. Let's get, let's get the fuck out of here. So I'm praying to God she's going to tell me to take the subway, get off at like 105th Street, 103rd, you know, which is like the first stop in Harlem where I can still look over my shoulder and see like all the white people like disappearing over the horizon, you know? But she goes, no man, you want to get on the Uptown 2-3 train, you want to get off at 125th Street. I'm like, ah, fuck, 125th Street. <laughs> Jesus Christ, that's like right in the middle of everything. I'm going to be surrounded on all four sides. I can't fucking do this. So, at this point, I'm really trying to hide like the bitchy tone that's starting to creep into my voice, you know? And I'm trying to ask for really specific directions for when I get up there, because I want to know exactly where I'm going. So she starts naming the streets I have to go down, and every other street up there is named after like a black leader, you know? She's like, make a left on Adam Clayton, take a right on Frederick Douglass. I'm like, ah, fuck Adam Clayton. <laughs> Yo, dude, go on the internet, look up Adam Clayton. 
Did he kill a bunch of white people during the slave revolt? Dude, I ain't going up there till I know what Adam's playing to fuck this shit. So at this point, I'm really having a battle with myself. Because I'm thinking I can't do this, right? I'm like, I can't do this, but my dick's going, no, come on, man, we can do this, all right? Just relax. Pull yourself together and get on the goddamn train, right? So as always, I listen to my dick. Oh yeah, I get on the train. By the time I get up there, it's like five or four in the morning, right? I'm staying on like Malcolm X and like Danny Glover or some shit, right? I don't even know where the hell I'm at. But I see the street I wanna go up. I wanna go up St. Nick. I can literally see her apartment building, but there's like five or six black dudes standing right on the corner, right where I wanna walk by. So I'm like, fuck! I thought I was on like some reality show at that point, like some sort of like white guy survivor. It was ridiculous. So I'm thinking I gotta walk right by these guys, right? You know what's funny? I think that they were actually more surprised to see me than I was scared, you know? And I was really, really scared, you know, but I'm also really, really white, you know? Like shockingly Caucasian. You know what I mean? Like if you're not ready for me, I can like surprise you. No, especially if you live up there, you've probably seen a white person for hours, possibly days. So when I show up, it's almost like magical, like a leprechaun came out of nowhere, you know? I felt like I should have like a little pot of gold. Like a rainbow behind me, top of the morning to you, like it. <laughs> kind of dance my way past them. But it's been going all right, you know. Once I get in her apartment, I'm fine, you know. I relax, sit down, you know, watch a hip hop countdown. <laughs> Pretend like I know the groups, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's just getting there that's a fucking pain in the ass. But you know, I don't get mad at it, because I figure, you know, black dudes gotta go through the same shit though, right? When you go out to the suburbs, go fuck a white girl, right? <laughs> just that same awful feeling of just leaving your people behind, you know, just less and less of you as you're fucking driving out there. Probably start off lean and you're all fucking cool. 20 minutes in, you're driving like 10 and two, the radio's off, like, dude, I don't like this shit. I don't like this shit at all. There's too much grass, I don't see any rims. This is fucked up. None of the windows are tinted. I can clearly see white people in every car. This is fucked up. Listen, you guys were awesome. Thank you so much for coming out. South, man, I had a real weird experience last time I came down here. I was in Nashville, right? Sort of an awkward social situation, right? I'm sitting at this bar. There's this white dude sitting like two stools away. I don't know him. He doesn't know me. And that Terrell Owens story was in like sports news. So I try to make conversation. I'm like, man, look at this guy. This guy just signed a $40 million contract. He's already bitching, man. How much money do you need to make? And the dude looks at me, he's like, you know what I say? And then he looked over his shoulder, which I now know is the telltale sign that the N-word is coming, and it's coming hard. Oh yeah, it's not going to be pronounced with the A, it's going to be with the R. And he hit the R, he like stuck the landing. It was like a dismount, clan members high-fiving in the background, like doing the wave. Just out of nowhere. So now, immediately, I'm looking over my shoulder like, dude, what the hell are you doing? You know what I mean? I'm waiting for like this hail of black fists to come raining down on top of me. I hate when people do stuff like that. That dude made me part of like a potential ass kicking that I had nothing to do with. You don't do shit like that. He just had that word hot potato, just threw it in my lap. Like, eh? Trying to pass it down to the next white dude. I hate when people do that, man. You know, it's like, dude, feel me out first. <laughs> Ask some questions. Do you like to fish? <laughs> Have you ever fucked your sister, right? <laughs> I start rattling off answers, then you go old school. <laughs> you give me a pamphlet, you tell me about your militia. <laughs> Don't just dive into it. That dude was one of the angriest people I ever met. I should have known that word was coming because he was just watching Terrell, right? Anytime I would bring up, look at man, that guy's talking trash, he would just like flip out. He won't shut up! <laughs> you know those people get like so mad they're not even looking at you? Their eyes are up, you just shut up and play the game! <laughs> you know what's funny? I don't even like Terrell, but now I love the guy. Because every time I see him talking trash, I know this idiot in Nashville 
He's just losing his mind, like kicking over his kitchen TV. Shut the fuck up! I like violence, man. I am. I, not, not like when it happens to me or if I see it live. I like watching it on TV, you know? Watching people, you know, get attacked by animals. <laughs> Just get blasted in the face or something, you know? Like, I'm a huge sports fan. You know my favorite, like, moment of, the, like, the last year was in sports? That Detroit Piston, Indiana Pacer, bench clearing brawl. Wasn't that great? That was one of the greatest things I've ever seen. I was so confused when I watched ESPN that day. They were like, that was absolutely disgraceful. Basketball fans, yeah, they just must be a little. I'm sitting there looking like, I'm a basketball fan. I loved it. I thoroughly enjoyed watching out of shape civilians get the shit kicked out of them <laughs> by professional athletes. It was fascinating. And I think as sports fans, we kind of had it coming, right? Because how many times you go into a game, right? You got a little too drunk. You started screaming at some dude on the field who could clearly kick the shit out of you, right? If you saw him in the parking lot, you'd be like, hey, can you sign my stamp collection? I think you're awesome. You get in the game, you're all drunk. You're like, you suck, buddy. You're a piece of shit. And they're always calling him up. Come on up here. No, come on up here. Well, they came up there. They didn't. They kicked the shit out of everybody. It was great. It was like a cartoon. You're like beating up whole rows of people at once. Like... I loved every second. I love how Ron Artest punched the wrong guy. Wasn't that great? He taught that dude a valuable lesson in life. When shit goes down, you don't just stand there like you're watching a movie like, wow, it's coming right at me. Must be in 3D or something. That was a five foot six inch, 110 pound white dude had an angry six foot 10 inch black dude running right at him. That had to have been in his top three nightmares all time. <laughs> right behind getting his dick cut off and being lit on fire. And he just stood there. He's like trying to explain himself. Well, I still have the liquid in my cup, so there's, there's no way I could have... It's an idiot. No means no, that's another one. No means no. It's like, no, it doesn't. All right? Look, look, no means no. No, that means no, all right? But no, stop it, what are you doing? <laughs> oh my God, you're being so bad, stop it, no. Yeah, that's not a fucking no. That means I wanna do it, but I'm afraid you're gonna judge me, so I'm just gonna make it look like it was your idea so you don't figure out that I've already performed this act with 40 other fucking people, right? <laughs> but then, then you go to court and you get a bad read and there's some guy reading it. Oh, your honor, she said no. Stop it. What are you doing? You're being so bad. <laughs> yeah, and you just sit me like, she didn't fucking say it like that. She didn't say it like that. So, I'm sick of Obama's wife. <laughs> yeah. This isn't some Republican rant either. It's just kind of first ladies in general. You know, I don't know what it is. All throughout my life, with each presidency, like these first ladies, they've just gotten more and more like, like, uh, like chatty. You know? More and more chiming in, like leaning into the frame, <laughs> spitting out their ideas. It's just like, well, why are you talking? Right? You weren't elected. Shut up. Your husband's not running a lemonade stand here. He's running the country. You don't just chime in. Let me guess, is this considered sexist? It is? Why? Well, okay, you just nodded there, lady. Let me ask you this, all right? Let's say you had a leak in your house, okay? You call a plumber up, he shows up, and he goes, yeah, I think the leak's coming from the upstairs bathroom, we need to shut it up, blah, blah, blah. Then all of a sudden his wife walks in, who isn't a plumber? And then goes, hey, you know, I'm actually taking care of you. Wouldn't you be like, with all due respect, shut the f up. I need a plumber in this moment. I'll extend an olive branch here. All right, at some point, there's going to be the first female president, right? Exactly. Which means at that moment, you're going to have the first male first lady, right? And when that happens, that dude needs to shut his trap. I don't want to hear a word out of him. 
I want to hear from the president. You, sir, go do some first lady stuff, all right? <laughs> go get yourself some gloves that go up to your elbows. <laughs> Smile and nod during speeches. Go put your own flair, redecorate in the White House, right? <laughs> Which leads you to Michelle Obama, right? Now she's sitting there holding up those hashtags. Remember that hashtag, bring back our girls? Remember that? It's like, I, it blew my mind. It's like, why are you showing me that? I'm a stand-up comedian. Like, what am I going to do to get those girls back? Why don't you look across the dinner table? It's like, you see that guy? <laughs> that is the leader of the free world. Tell him to pick up a phone, call some Navy SEALs and solve it. What, what am I going to do? Show up with a sharpened mic stand. Oh, Michelle said to bring him back. <laughs> So let's talk, uh, let's talk white women here, shall we? <laughs> let's talk white women. White women, you're amazing. Amazing your accomplishments over the last few years. I gotta tell you, the way white women somehow hijack the woke movement, generals around the world should be analyzing this. <laughs> Just to refresh your memory, the woke movement was supposed to be about people of color, not getting opportunities, the at-bats that they deserved, finally making that happen. And it was about that for about eight seconds. And then somehow, white women swung their Gucci booted feet over the fence of oppression and stuck themselves at the front of the line. I don't know how they did it. I've never heard so much complaining in my life from white women. I think it's so hard with my SUV and my heated seats. You have no idea what it's like to be me. Trash and white guys. The nerve, where's the camera? The nerve of you white women. Let me, I don't, listen, I don't want to speak ill of my bitches here, okay? I don't, but let's, let's go back in history here, okay? You guys stood by us toxic white males through centuries of our crimes against humanity. You rolled around in the blood muddy, and occasionally when you wanted to sneak off and hook up with a black dude, if you got caught, you said it wasn't consensual. Yeah, that's what you did. That's what you did. So why don't you shut up, sit down next to me, and take your talking to. <laughs> Thank you. I, I will get married, you know. I was making that. I'll definitely get married someday, you know. I, I, you know, I love women and everything. I'm just finding I'm not, like, compatible with them. You know what I mean? You ever just feel that? Like, women have, like, too much energy for me, you know what I mean? Like, you can't have a day off when you have a girlfriend. You ever notice that? It's almost like they see that open day, they're like, oh, my God, let's go fill it up with shit. <laughs> no, then they just come at you with one horrible idea after another. Horrible ideas. Like, you want to make some sandwiches and go to the park? You want to go to the container store, get some containers for your T-shirts? This is the worst one. You ever get this one? You want to go to brunch? You want to go to brunch on Sunday? And inside you're like, fucking no! But you can't say that, right? You got to keep them happy. So what do you do? You agree. Like, yeah, let's go to brunch. What a great idea. Why would you want to sleep in on a Sunday when you can go pay $18 for eggs? Now nah, you're thinking. Now nah, you're thinking. Then we can sit around to listen to your friends have moronic conversations about the eggs, like, is that pesto? Is that pesto in your omelet? Oh, it's asparagus. It's asparagus. I thought it was pesto. Oh, you just want to flip the whole fucking table over? It's horrendous. I'm trying to learn to pick my battles when I date girls. I usually argue with women all the time, man. I'm stupid like that, you know? Like, I dated this girl one time. She was, like, really into, like, women's issues. So we used to always have these dumbass arguments. So one time she came up to me. She goes, okay, explain this to me, Bill. Why does a guy make more an hour to do the exact same job, huh? Hmm? Hmm? I go, I'll tell you why. Because in the unlikely event that we're both on a Titanic and it starts to sink, for some fucked up reason, you get to leave with the kids and I have to stay. I get the dollar more now. No, think about it. If there's a house fire, it's always women and children first. 
I got to stand there with like the back of my shirt on fire going, let's go people, let's go, let's go. So that's how I look at it. No, it's a dollar an hour surcharge. That if something fucked up happens, either I can't leave or I got to like get in the way of it to give you a head start. Like rabbit dog, run honey. One Mississippi, two Mississippi. You hear a bump in the night, I got to go check it out. Like, yes, he does have a knife. Anytime there's a hostage situation, who do they negotiate for first? Well, at least let the women and children go. Well, what about me? <laughs> Bullets hurt me too. Why the fuck do I gotta stay in the vault? <laughs> no, that's my point, man. Where are all the feminists in those situations? You know what I mean? You can't find them. There are no feminists in a house fire. That's a, that's a guarantee. You could take the most hardcore feminist, some chick right in your face, like, he's shoving his dick down a bitch. Little short, little haircut, the whole nine yards, right? <laughs> Second those flames break out, she's gonna twist those little hairs into pigtails. No, I'm just a girl. I wanna go play jump rope. <laughs> and leave you standing in a burning house like you're not flammable. <laughs> you know, but I'm not, I'm not a dick, though. I'm not, I'm not saying I think a woman should make a doll less an hour to do the same job. All I'm saying is if you're going to make what I make when the boat sinks, you better be standing right there next to me, listen to that guy play the cello. <laughs> then you get the corner office. You get all the benefits or whatever. I was going back and forth with somebody um, this morning, an East Coast friend of mine who I hadn't talked to in a while. How you enjoy being a dad and blah, 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 blah. And then she hits me up with the whole, hey, I'm turning 50 this year. I am not happy about it. I said, yeah, I turned 50 last year. She goes, how was turning 50 for you? You know, she goes, you're a guy. You probably don't care. It's much harder for a woman, especially with our careers. Oh, did I have fun with that? You know, <laughs> I just wrote back. Well, Jesus fucking Christ. You know what I mean? White women complaining is one of the funniest. It's like you got a fucking house and a beautiful family. What is the fucking? Pr it's so much harder for me. You're going to outlive me by six to eight years. So me turning 50 is like me turning like 56, 57, 58. You don't hear me complaining. You know, you never hear me complain on this podcast. This is nothing but positivity, rainbows and fucking unicorns. Um, yeah, I love that shit. It's harder, for, it's harder for women to go to the gym. It's harder for us to lose weight. Well, then fucking work harder. You know? Everybody's different. Oh, is that where it's harder? You know what's, you know what's harder for me? Uh, uh, trying to get some woman to pay the cover charge and buy me drinks. You know it's harder for me? D divorce court. Uh, outliving you. I mean, it, 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 it balances out, ladies. Getting child support. Yeah, that's harder for me because I'll be the one paying it. And all of a sudden, it costs 900 grand a month to raise a fucking two-year-old, right? I, I just don't understand the constant complaining by white women. Okay, you're white. You live in America. Shut up. Okay, wait till the other problems are solved, and then we'll get to you. You're at the meat counter. Your number isn't up yet. Wait your turn. All right? Wait your turn, Abigail. Do you know how much harder? It's so much easier for you to go to jail. It's not easier. Men's lives are harder because we have to live with you guys. <laughs> oh, man. I want to become friends with a lesbian couple, and I want to, like, be friends with, like, the, 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 the chick in the relationship that's got to handle more of the dude shit, you know, because, you know, opposites attract. And I would think even, like, in the lesbian community, there's going to be somebody, you know, who's out there swinging the axe, getting the fucking firewood, while the other one's in there making the muffins. That's the lesbian I want to talk to. Right into my podcast, please. You know, I want to know if, if those lesbians on average die sooner than 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 the, the, the dainty lesbian, you know. The lesbian who's got to go out on the fucking roof and adjust the fucking direct TV satellite fucking thing <laughs> in the middle of the fucking rain. That's who I want to. That's who I want to hear from. That's the study I would be doing. This isn't really a sport. It's just a. Uh just a game. What are you talking about? It's, it's like in the Olympics and stuff. It's Dude, feel how comfortable these clothes are. Look at this. 
You're not supposed to be able to do this with pants on. Like, these pants are so comfortable, I keep having to look down to make sure my dick is enough. It doesn't even feel like I'm wearing clothes right now. Do you know why that is? It's just because so many unathletic fat fucks play this game. Dude, the fact that everybody has to shut up when you hit the ball, there's nobody guarding you, and if you, ooh, simmer down. Simmer down, everybody. He's going to hit the ball. Shh. Talking to a Seahawk fan here. Now, is it true the rumor is that you guys aren't as loud as they say that they actually designed the stadium to contain it? Seahawks! Sounds like a pigeon. You ever watch somebody take a free throw in basketball? Uh, yeah. There's sure. like 5,000 people going, fuck you, fuck your mother. And this thing here, it's not even moving. Dude, they've changed the clubs. These used to be made out of wood. It was too heavy for them. <laughs> too heavy for these cheating banker cunts, right? Of course, there we go. So all you do is you just, you, you, you don't look there. You just go like this and you go like that. Look at that. Jesus Christ. That's how you play golf. It's because you were talking. Sorry. All right. Another thing that I'm loving about this stadium is they don't care about color coordination. Whatever bucket of paint is on sale, they're going for it. This beautiful, uplifting brown that they have painted this. Uh, isn't your idol Richard Pryor? Everybody? All right, let's pull Oh, no, up. You, you don't idol Richard Pryor? Come on. Good to see yeah, you, my like friend. It's like asking a guitar player if he likes Hendrix. I mean, he's the man. All right. He's all right, the man. All right, all right. See how I do that? You just ask me a question, all of a sudden I make it uncomfortable? That's you didn't even have to come to love. Nobody brings I felt good. I felt good. I felt, make sure you, you speak into the mic. Make sure you speak into the mic. There you go. Um, we discovered that there's this a... This is the weirdest story anybody's ever said <laughs> on like, the podcast. <laughs> that like, made me uncomfortable. <laughs> From the beginning, too. No, it's the serial killer like tone of his, his complete lack of emotion. Thank you. Can I tell and you something? This happened. <laughs> yes. Say. Yeah. You know what? And I know Bill. The only thing missing from that story is the sound of somebody gagged, screaming in the other room. Right. Now, I know that you. Oh, just let me go! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I know that you suspect that my husband is a psycho. I've heard, I've heard about no, this. No, he is. Yeah. No, I know. And I've, he I actually agree. Is. <laughs> yeah. And I've been trying to prove this on this show for He's a long time. He's just like, you know, there's like Bud and there's Bud Light. There's like Psycho and Psycho Light. Like he just, yeah. he's not the, uh, the high calorie one that can't get married and have kids. That's right. Yes. But if you, if his thoughts were a movie. Yep. Yeah. Definitely NC-17. Yep. He's a functioning psychopath. Bill Burr, ladies and gentlemen, we're getting into the mind of Bill Burr. Bill was late for his own podcast. Bill, are you ready for this? This is the best part that I think. This is this is what's mind blowing that people are going to love. Bill Burr. You have your, your your own name on your fucking sweatshirt. Well, outside of that, I mean, when are you going to stop you Brandon don't. Kef? We know who you are. Just in case you didn't, Bill, I wore a shirt to remind you. What's the big fucking deal, man? All right, it's just a hoodie shirt. with Kevin Hart. I hand out hoodies to homeless people because I care about downtown LA. Go see Jumanji Part 19. <laughs> the studio system has ruined you. <laughs> you want me to be a soft, uh, you know, you know, one of those Twitter tough guys? When guys come and sit on the couch, I go right after them. Don't you respect me for that? No, I don't. <laughs> your big dumb desk hiding behind your I microphone. I you for keeping it real, Colin. Yeah, I kept it a hundred. Well, what about you when you call can... somebody out and then have them in front of you? That's punk. Can't no, do that. but then you can actually just admit that you're wrong when the guy's delivering, because now he's delivering, he's still trash. Well, yeah, him. he's not admitting that he's yeah, wrong. That's, yet, that's what I'm saying. There you are. Look at Billy. How are you? You look like a fucking pride. I get my stupid headphones to work here. Some that'll work. Let me see if these ones will work. Hold on a second. No, they work good. My headphones aren't working for me, though. Oh, okay. <laughs> It's about me, Nick. It's not about you here. Here we go. Are you from Southie? No. That's, that's a Goodwill hunting question that I've answered for 15 years, ever since that movie came out. Are you good at math? Do you like apples? Where are you I, from in Boston? I lived in a, sa a safe suburbs. Saugus? Wait, do you really? I, I would like to know. Look how beautiful you like are. I'm Look up, beautiful. You know how many psychos are out there? I'm not going to tell oh, where I live. Like What's your social pushing? security number? <laughs> you don't have any kids. No, I don't. And I don't like the way you said that. Like you, said it's very... <laughs> you don't have any kids. No, I don't have any kids. I'm going to adopt. <laughs> That's nice. I'm going to rescue a couple of the children that work till four in the morning. <laughs> to put this. They make them catch it when it rains. <laughs> okay? And you have to stand out there <laughs> and, until it's full. And if it doesn't rain that day, you actually get beaten and they dock your pay because you didn't do the rain dance right. And then we sit here and we drink this shit and we wonder why China hates us.
I don't have I don't have any sympathy for fat people, by the way. That's another one. No, I don't. Just zero? No? Because where are they on Kick a Ginger Day? Huh? Do they send me a card? They don't. There's people only a... care about their group. That's it. <laughs> I've noticed that through doing stand-up. The people when you when you make fun of animals, the people who get offended is 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 the animal people, right? You, sure. you make you make fun of Asians, the Asians come up, you make fun of this, right? But the Asian people never never defend the fatties, right? The fat people never go, hey, lay off those chihuahua jokes. They don't. It's just it's very selfish. <laughs> Where they'll sit there and just subject after subject is going by, and it, oh, they're all laughing. And the second it comes to their neighborhood, it's it's not jokes anymore. The, these these statements that you made, like like I'm on meet the press. Yeah. You are a major conspiracy theorist. I'm a realist, though. Yes. Conspiracy theory has gotten a bad name where now it's 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 become synonymous with like moronic thought. Like if you're into conspiracy theory, if you think like the bankers need to be stopped, then you also think the moon is made out of cheese. <laughs> and you think that there's shape shift shifters and like lizard people. You know, they just try to knock it down. It's like this country started with a conspiracy. That's how it came. We won. <laughs> so they're considered heroes and rebels, you yeah. know, uh, whatever what you re saying? revolutionaries, but yeah. if they lost they would be hanged for, conspi for yeah. conspiring. Yeah. yeah, it's not like it spontaneously happened. Yeah, like all of a sudden everybody just picked up a gun and started shooting at the British. You know, they sat around. <laughs> they, said they planned they it out. They planned it out. Yeah. I'm kind of getting tired of these people. What are you <laughs> it's funny when you said we win. I'm like, did we really win? But I understand what you're saying. I understand what you're saying. Now, oh, is that that African American thing? Yeah. <laughs> You know, I was reading a little bit about you, and it says that you have a tendency to kind of go with your first thought. Yeah. Because reading makes you sleepy. That's right. And my first thought is this is the best week to be here, the week before the Super Bowl. That is so true. Before all the whores fly in. Uh huh. You know? Yeah. But just want to get out. Wow. <laughs> just want to get out of here before that. What is true? This is like the Oscars uh, for oh. prostitutes. Okay. All right. This well, entire week. Let's remember we're G rated here. <laughs> um, yeah. He he like he's like a. 300 pound dude and he was bullying another 300 pound dude. Oh, I did I hear about that. I don't understand. Now, you know what it is about that whole thing? I don't think it's any of my business. You know what I mean? That was a private phone call, you know, and then you put it on TV. Dude, if you took 90% of my, my text messages and phone messages and you put them on the news, you would run out of podiums to put in front of me <laughs> that I would have to apologize. The crap me and DeRosa say to each other, forget uh, it. Uh, it's over. <laughs> My stuff is so bad, we actually have code. You know what's crazy is I knew that. Yeah. I'm close enough with Joe where he's like, look at the fake name yeah, we, we have, have this Yeah, 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 like code. <laughs> and look at everybody here, getting silent like you don't do the same thing. <laughs> you know? I do know. Oh, everybody, yeah. everybody has, you know, you got your little Paula Dean moments. You got something. <laughs> you, you know, everybody coming down on that chef like they're a perfect person. Huge fan of hockey. I love it, and I love that people don't get it down in the states. I love it. I love it. Why do they make? Why do they let them fight? I can't see the puck. It's like music to my ears. <laughs> it's like good. Yeah, get out of here. You, Let's just get out of here. Let me let me let me watch it in it's, peace. Do you remember when they lit up the puck for a few years on, on TV? News, yeah, that was you guys. Do you know? No, but the but the NHL. Well, no, no, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Though. Time out. Oh, time well. out. Time out. The NHL is you guys too, so all the owners had to agree with that, and you all had to be like, we gotta, we gotta like expand this thing. We thought we'd funnel money into Canada and keep it here, but you guys took it over, like you tend to do. But well, I'm not going to apologize no, for that. No, no, no. You're big on the yeah. I mean, that's just business, dude. You're acting like we came and knocked you on the head. You know what we're about? I yeah. We wait. Well, wait a minute. Oh yeah. Wait a second, <laughs> fellow white person, <laughs> not native. To this country? How did you guys get this up here? Did the Native Americans go, oh, well, we like these white guys. You can have all that land. <laughs> Jesus Christ. No, I, oh, I get it. Your shit smells like maple syrup up here. <laughs> is that what you're telling me? All right. Yeah. I'll go with it. So your Christian background is is part of the the show. Or yes, and I episodes. wanted to talk to you about Jesus after this. Well, I, <laughs> not, the other reason why I bring it up is some people thought maybe you went a little too far. You know, as far you, as what? Well, they thought that maybe you were being disrespectful to the Christian religion. Who did? So, I'm telling you, you need to Google. <laughs> oh, good lord! So I, did I, you I, feel I, you were being some... disrespectful, or just you you were just having fun with some of the crucifixes and stuff like that? I don't even know what you, I mean, we did maybe two jokes was, about that. Yeah, exactly. 
Don't you think the Catholic Church went a little too far? <laughs> More so than my cartoon. All right, listen. A couple of jokes. I know this is a morning show. You can't bring up all those crimes. You know what? Technically, they just, they just sort of kept moving them around. You know, like those killer whales at SeaWorld. After it kills a trainer, they'll then move it up to Seattle. They don't give them their background. All right, I'm not totally following, <laughs> but uh, I don't think I'm You know I want what I'm to. talking about? It's a morning show. I understand. I like that. Thank you for being positive. On, that kid positive. was missed the graduation, and then, then the, it was a feel-good it was, story. It was a feel-good, and we want to leave. If you want to feel good about America, you watch the morning shows. You don't watch this, you know? And we watch. We were joking earlier. If that kid's story about the graduation was late night, that would have been a whole different story. What do you think? He's still missing. We can't <laughs> find him. All we found was his hat. But you watch in the morning. It's great. It all worked out. He got his own personal graduation. Like, I was in such a great mood. Look how <laughs> yellow this couch is. It's like the sun. Listen, where's the line? You know, I'm I don't think there is a line. I mean, it's an art form. I would just, there you go. One person agreed. I, don't, I, I just, pharmaceutical companies can hand out fucking opiates to everybody like they're handing out flyers to some shitty jam band and get everybody hooked on heroin and nobody has a problem with it. But you tell a Caitlyn Jenner joke in a fucking strip mall and all of a sudden people get offended. That's a good point. It makes a good point.